We continue in our school on Sunday. Titled Lessons from the Inverse of Dreams. We have covered quite a huge ground in this series. And it would be, be a good idea if you buy the CD and listen to it all over again and pray the prayers. Again, I turn to the book of Genesis to them. Genesis 37. I'm, not reading, I'm reading verse 19. Genesis 37, 19. 37 19. Genesis is getter than you put. And they said one to another, What's the way from around our face? Oh, this dreamer cometh. Allah, Lani, Mboha, come now, therefore. Let us slay him and cast him to some pit. And we will see. So evil beings have devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. We emphasize at that in the University of Dreams, there are two departments. The dream you have when you sleep, which is a separate agenda entirely. Then there is a dream that is a picture of your future, transferred into your heart by the Lord. That which you are supposed to become. We have a name for it called your Joseph's dream. And we covered various grounds on this. And we took about 10 lessons from this University of Dreams the last time we looked at this. And now we go forward and see how far the Lord will help us today. Lesson number 11 in the University of Dreams is that dreams can help us see the invisible. Believe the incredible and achieve the impossible. Dreams can help you see that which is invisible. It has not happened yet. But you are seeing it in the height of your spirit. You don't have a degree yet. But you see yourself with a degree. You don't have that certificate yet. You see yourself with that certificate. You have not even rented a shop yet. Yes. But you are seeing yourself in the high of the spirit in that supermarket. So dreams help you to see that invisible thing. Believe what human beings think is incredible. And then achieve what they think is impossible. There is a verse in scripture, Psalm 84. Open wide your mouth, he says, and I will feel it. What does it mean, open wide your mouth? Open wide your mouth doesn't mean you just open your mouth wide. No, no, no. Open wide your mouth that the psalmist is talking about there. Is that ask for a big thing. That you serve a big God. Therefore, don't belittle him by asking for something small. Ask for a big thing. That others will say, ah, ah. Are you sure you are alright? Mm-hmm. This kind of prayer you are praying. Dreams help us to see that. 12. Lesson 12. Discouragement and disappointment are dream robbers. Discouragement 
and disappointment. They are dream robbers. Meaning you must not allow those two things to penetrate into your system. Discouragement is this towards this courage. This courage and this you remove courage courage is removed appoint this appoint all those this 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 thing this courage and more than any other weapon of darkness that the devil uses. Discouragement is a very powerful tool. Because once a man permits discouragement, your spirit goes down. And once your spirit goes down, you can't really fight any battle. Listen carefully, beloved. We are in a war. And so if you are in a boxing ring, you may win. But it doesn't mean in your process of winning. A few blows will not land on your head. There have been boxing matches. Even as they are declaring somebody the winner. Blows have closed his eyes. He could even hardly see the referee. But he won. But although he won, quite a few blows passed to his face. Those blows are the discouragement. A man was having a very bad time. So he cried himself to sleep. When he slept, he had a dream. He found himself in a huge market. And he began to move about from stall to stall. From stall to stall. Eventually, one stall caught his attention. It was called the devil's shop. He now went there to see what Mr. Devil was selling sickness failure death all kinds of things he was selling he was looking at it he was looking at the price tag the devil put on it now someone holds equipment that looks like second hand that looks like a second hand tool was the most expensive and I said this thing is, looks old what is the most expensive the shop, the person who was selling in the devil's shop, said, Yes, that is spirit of discouragement. It is, it is our most effective tool against Christians. That's why you see that it's well used. And it's very, very expensive. I'm praying for somebody here. Every arrow of discouragement fired into your heart to send you backward. I command those arrows when discouragement sets in, a man's spirit gets weak. This was going to happen to the psalmist. But he prayed one prayer point on his own head. Say, return to your resting place, O oh my soul. Return to your resting place. Go back to that place of rest. Refuse to be troubled. These are dream 
from like we were told this morning you could do things and fail but it doesn't mean you are failed it means you need to go back and re-strategize to prepare yourself prepare yourself and come back your team have lost a match you don't just come back at home sorrowing you go back why did we lose it in what area should we improve what should we do the story is written about the man who did the light bulb he did over a thousand experiments before, before he got it to work if, if he had given up at 500 600, 600 800, 800 900 1000 maybe we will not even have the bulb today the man to it I refuse to be discouraged I pray one more time that the arrow of discouragement as trying to trouble your heart must backfire in the name of Jesus let that man roar like thunder. Lesson 13 you must learn in the universe of dream is that no one is too old to dream. No one is too old to dream. Caleb was an old man. He dreamt. Came to pass. Moses began his ministry at the age of 80. No one is too old. This is why the Bible says, In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all men, sons, sons and daughters, shall prophesy. You have made servants. Oh, my my son. Son. Lord, 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 it's an instrument of your mind. And if you continue to confess you are old, you are old, you are old. You will age. Fourteen. You are never too young to dream. Never too young to dream. Oh, kereju, lati lala. So young men shall see visions. Be part of my sinner upon your you men's servant or your mid servant. So no one is too young to dream to be great. Fifteen. Dreamer of dreams are not generally accepted in the first instance. They don't normally accept them. Because more than anything, they are antagonized. They try to fight them. They try to pull them down. They try to say, no, 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 no. No one has ever done this in our family. You can't do it. They try to pull you down. They use all kinds of methods to pull you down. You see, no, no, no. You cannot pull me down. When I left the University of Lagos and I, and I came out with a first class degree, I had an uncle who kept troubling my life. Daniel, 
We can't sit down like this. Ah, ole, you go tell the rabbi. Like the first person in our family. The whole year, the kini ni no be to get a degree and this kind of degree. That in ni ru e we be be le. So please, we do not move pale. We must fortify you. Ah, that you ru only agbara so that they don't kill you. Come on, Papa. I say, Uncle, I'm fine. Money, but oh, 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 one day I said, Uncle, you know what? Let's go. So he took me in his car, he was happy. He took me to somewhere. And we enter into one corner. Enter into the room. Because when I got there, I found that he was a native doctor. So I sat down. When we entered, I saw the man. The man who was to fortify me. I saw him sitting down. Eating yam. With palm oil. And salt. That's, uh, uh. This one wants to fortify me. He cannot even afford to buy an egg. Mm. To eat his jam. I said, I started praying. Father, pray Baba. Do something. To send my uncle out of here. So I can deal with this man. So very soon, I Uncle, sorry, sorry, sorry. I did not remove the car key. Let me go and remove it from the car. Let me go and remove it from the car. I said, thank you, Jesus. So he went out. And I looked at the man straight in the heart. See yourself. You're a useless man. Ordinary egg you cannot buy. Eh, you last one last one. Eh, only era. You want to fortify human being? You can't fortify yam and egg. Oh, very real. You can't like para. Oh, only real. You can't like para. Well, only. And you are sitting down there. Oh, there. Don't consider by. God, come for the vacation. Eh, real. You can't like para. Well, only. Fortify yourself. For the first, for the first order. Don't roll around like para. Don't roll around well, only. Don't like para. The man was shocked, looking at me like this. Eh, real poor money. In fact, don't go below you. At that level, my uncle went there again. Ne buy ne. Apu no buy ba wole. So I kept quiet. Ba to pa no mo. And the man told my uncle, said before I open my eyes, get this, your brother out of fear. He is a witch. More and more, you could only buy a journey. Ah, so please, my brother, help him. I said, I said, get him out of here. My uncle was still trying to beg him. He went as if he wanted to pick something under his bed. He ran up and I ran up to him. Those were attempts by the enemy to kill the dream. I'm praying for somebody else. If your parents have taken you to somewhere, ignorantly, they didn't know that they, they took you there to help you. Actually, they, actually they now destroyed your dream there. Recover those dreams in the name of Jesus. Recover them, recover them. Sixteen. To fulfill your dream, you must be divinely dissatisfied. Divinely dissatisfied. That is, you have 
constructive discontent. You are divinely dissatisfied. This, you are not happy with that level where you are now. And you want to move forward. You are discontent, but it's constructive one. Holy, holy discontent. I need the Lord is then you start moving. When you become divinely dissatisfied, you now move into the school of holy desperation. And when you become desperate divinely, you begin to make progress. You begin to make progress. 17. To fulfill your dreams, you must destroy destructive habits. There are some habits that we need to kill. One of them was mentioned this morning. If you have not won the battle of the bed, you sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep. You won't really get far. Another one was mentioned this morning. Like the couple who had the baby, anger. They destructive habits. Destroy all those habits out of your life. 18. To fulfill your dreams, you must pray for the spirit of creativity. Creativity. And God gives you the spirit to be creative. To fulfill your dreams. 19th lesson to learn. And listen to me very carefully. Uncommon dreams create uncommon enemies. Uncommon dreams create uncommon adversaries. Please understand this very well. Don't think the enemy is going to fold his hands. And just let you be doing what you want like that. Of course, they will contest with you. Elijah, Elijah, when he was around, the same 51 soldiers to him once, he roasted them. The same under 51, he roasted them. The same the third one, but that one had plenty of home training. My father, please. <laughs> I can see that you have roasted one hundred and two soldiers here. Please, please be merciful unto me. That's why Elijah said that one. So when Elijah was around, one hundred and two soldiers came against him. By the time Elisha came, the man with the double portion, they didn't send 102 soldiers to him. They sent a whole army. A whole army to him. So the more uncommon the dreams are, the more uncommon the enemies are. Finally, number 20. Your character can be an asset or a deficit to your dreams. Your character can either be an asset or a deficit to your dreams. Character is what you have when nobody is looking at you. Character is what you really are inside. A lot of people smile from the outside. They talk from the outside. But inward is very bad. Very bad character. 
Guru Giti Giti Lo Your character if it's good Start asset to your dreams If it's bad It's a death And they can push you back 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 And eventually even destroy the dream If you are not careful this is where we are going to stop today I will continue the inverse of dreams next time rise to your feet now and lay your right hand upon your head the Bible says these are the hands that scattered Judah so Judah could not raise his head the horn that scattered Judah so Judah could not raise his head there is a power that scatters a man so that the man can never raise his head there is a horn of darkness that fights against a man and he cannot achieve his destiny his head is pressed down because he has been scattered this is why I want you to lose your temper now as you pray this prayer pray with fire and with power first as time to scatter me Scatter by the power in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. If he's pressing down your head, in Jesus' name we pray. I have a word for three persons here. The Lord said, as you said, tell those three persons. But as they were praying really hard this morning, that the keys, keys that have been stolen from you from birth is returned to you immediately. And are those things that belong to you that are currently in the warehouse of darkness before today runs to an end the material hidden in the warehouse shall come back to you Seven persons here. And when your major did it, that's what I should tell you. All who are for you, but in this thing that is happening to you, that although they are reaching you off as no good, but those who wrote you off, they are coming to celebrate with you. Jesus. Yes. Holy Ghost! Hey, Mimi Ma! Holy Ghost! Hey, Mimi Ma! Pamper me by fire! Kemi, go get 
In the name of Jesus. Pamper me by fire. Jesus, then we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. And now, hand you over to the Eagle and Empowerment Group. So, I will some of the questions we have been sending to them on empowerment and wealth creation. As today, is the second Sunday, where we'll to go into empowerment and wealth creation praise the name of the lord okay, hallelujah this morning there shall be shower of blessing oh joy buko yoro lowo can i hear a big amen i'm sorry la jojo we want to welcome you to the Eagle Hour sun- Sunday. Today, there shall be great things in our lives in Jesus' name. And I'm trusting God. God will do the unusual. In Jesus' name. Before us, we have the first question. And um, the, cost, the question is thus. The person says, I don't like to talk or discussing money issues. I don't like discussing or talking about money issues. That seems very humbled. But the truth about it is that um, we need to look at it very closely. Why some people seem to attract money. Why, why some people seem to attract money to themselves. Others repel it. Why does it seem as if uh, money is friendlier to some people? Why some others it seems to be their enemies? The Bible says the rich and the poor meet together. But the Lord is the maker of them all. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 2. What that place is simply telling us is this. Both the sun and the rain falls upon every woman being. Now, if you are not bold to talk about money, you cannot have money. That is the truth. There is a particular scripture in the Bible that the Lord devoted just for negotiation. And this negotiation is not taught in the four corners of the university. If you cannot negotiate in the scheme of things in life, you cannot be wealthy. Have you heard some people saying this? After they have done a service to you, you will think that they are humble. You will think that uh, 
they, they are good people. But it just shows that they do not have financial intelligence. After they have rendered service to you, and you ask them, How much is your money? They will say, Bring anything. If you are like that, it will be difficult for you to have money. You must be able to give value to your services. Life is all about negotiation. If you work for somebody, and you are, they, say, they ask you, how much? Are you willing to collect? I said, bring anything. It shows that you have financial sickness. If you want to build wealth, if you want to build wealth, you must develop a good negotiating skill. Ability to negotiate well. Presenting issues constructively. Which of the scriptures spoke about negotiation? Which of the scriptures in the Bible dealt extensively about negotiation? It's in the book of Philomi. The whole of Philomen. The Bible spoke about negotiation. It is not humility. Not to be able to talk about money. Money is a defense. Ability to engage your brain. This Cross, cross across every profession. Even if you are a lawyer, you are a tax consultant, everybody you must be humble enough to learn how to negotiate. To tell us the truth. All married men here, you negotiated before the sister said yes. Yes or no? Uh-huh. I can see that you are shaking the head now. Praise the name of the Lord. Your negotiation skill determine your attitude in life. A close mouth. Thank you. A close mouth is a close destiny. The second question. I'm always scared of a time when I will not be able to meet my financial obligations. This person said, um, I am worried about my financial obligation. Because there will be a time that um, I will get old and I... I will not be able to meet up the financial obligations. This person is a prayer warrior. Because the Holy Spirit is troubling him. That there will be a time that the body will be so old, you cannot do what you are doing now. And because of that, the Holy Ghost is telling him, prepare for your future. Please listen to me very well. To so prepare for future is adequate planning. In Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3, the living standard I read. The living standard Bible version I'm reading now. For us to understand it very well. It says this. He said, any enterprise. Any enterprise. Any company. Any company. Is built 
by wise planning and become strong through common sense, through common sense, and profit wonderfully by make by keeping abreast of the facts. Any enterprise, any family must be built by wise planning. In the book of Proverbs 28, verse 19, he that tillage his land shall have plenty of bread. But he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. By wise planning, you can you can meet all your financial obligations. By wise planning, you can meet your financial obligation. How do you do this? It's by diligence. It's by diligence. It's by diligence. There are many of us, the Holy Spirit is struggling. There is a time you are young. There is old age. You must plan for your future. That is why you are not at peace. Diligence makes a man to refuse to sleep. Diligence makes a man to be unable to sleep. When others are sleeping. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. It will, it, you will be answering tomorrow's questions. Oh, my dear, 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 dear. When others are still living in the past. It is by wisdom. Now, start asking answering tomorrow's questions. Diligence. It, ma- it makes a man to prepare for future when others have taken early rest. A lot of young men like me. When you see them, you know that this one is not going anywhere. Why? It's written on their faces. When a person is having vision for tomorrow, even though Naira and Cowboy is not in his pocket, this person, you will see it in him. Imagine a a woman that is pregnant and the tummy is big. Everybody knows that this person is pregnant. The same thing with a man of vision. You will definitely see it in him. Diligence makes a man to push. It says beyond the limits. You must be diligent. If you want to meet up your financial obligation while you are getting old. Those who answer tomorrow's questions. Today. Will always be ahead. Those who will answer tomorrow's question today, they will always be ahead. Anybody that answers tomorrow's question now will always be ahead. Praise the name of the Lord. The third question is this. I hate to ask or borrow money. I hate to ask or borrow money for fear of not paying back when it is due or when people 
knowing I am not financially viable, which may lead to disrespecting me. Did you get the question? The person says that he hates to borrow or ask for money for the fear that he will not be able to pay back. And um, when he asks, people for money so, that will lead to disrespecting. Yeah, now the question, the answer is this. It's a modern day problem that um, there is a lot of people in debt. But we must try and make conscious efforts. Stop buying things you cannot afford. Having a line of credit for everything, it is not good. Stop living beyond your means. Did you remember the scriptures? In the book of Proverbs 22, verse 7, the rich ruler over the poor. The rich rulers over the poor and the borrowers. The borrower is servant to the lender. Praise God. The truth about it is this. I was once a borrower. Uh, I was once a borrower. But if you can pray, you can borrow. If you are being led by God 100% and you know that God is leading you, you can borrow. But know this. You must be 100% sure. And we always tell everybody that comes to the business fellowship don't borrow while you are old when you are old borrow when you are young when you have strength to run praise the name of the Lord I have to borrow because I didn't have any other means I borrowed 5,000 to start my business and then I paid back. To borrow is not easy. So, please, please pray that God will make you a lender, not a borrower. If I'm not financially viable, what should I do? I have a friend. He comes to our church headquarters here. Do you know why? Anytime he comes to the church, he says that that is the time he gets business idea. So one of the things you must explore as you are sitting down there, the Lord can give you idea that will turn your life around. If you are not financially viable, what should I do? Ask for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Open yourself up. That will show me the path of life. That will show me the path of life. In thy presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there is pleasure evermore. That is in the book of Psalm 16 verse 11. Seek for better people, better people than you. Look for mentors in the church. Before I finish this place, can I tell you this story? There was a pastor in this church. All I do is to see him on the pulpit. So I don't know his name. I look for his name. I look for where he was working. I asked 
people about what he likes. And I bought those things for him. What was I looking for? I was not looking for his money. I was looking for his wisdom. You must be able to have people that can help you. Identify your mentors. Invest in them. And it invest in them. It's not necessarily money. You can invest your time. Praise the name of the Lord. Lastly, my time is gone. I, I have what I want to start my own business. But my fear is that I have very little and sorry I, I have I want to start my own business. But my fear is that if I leave the little paying job I am doing I might not have enough money to sustain or carry out the business that is the fear of many people in career but you can do so many things because of my time I won't be able to take this. Maybe we'll try and do that next uh, meeting. Or where we come for the business fellowship. In November we will do that. God bless us. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Good morning once again, church. In this session of the Eagle Hour, we shall be treating two questions. The first one goes like this. I had a financial problem which made me to borrow money to expand my business. At the end of the day, the business failed and I was unable to pay what I borrowed. Now, I want to start another business. I am afraid to do so. What can I do? Our first observation is that the sender of this question is that the sender of this question has not demonstrated the right attitude towards failure. He failed once and is afraid to take another step. As a Christian, you are not supposed to fail in business. If you do so, you, are, you should find out why you failed. We also would like to tell you that you should never make failure become an intimidator to you. Rather make failure your motivator. Don't exhibit fear when you fail. Because fear will give birth to doubt. Fear will slow you down. And fear can eventually stop you. All these are the experiences this person who wrote this question has had. Failing is a learning experience. 
so you can do better next time. If you fail in the business, don't dwell on it. Learn from your mistakes and keep moving forward. The good news we have for you today is that if you have failed in business before, you can bounce back and become a huge success story. Abraham Lincoln Abraham Lincoln he failed in business at the age of 23. He also failed a couple of times at the polls before he became American president. The current president of the United States of America, Mr. Donald Trump, declared bankruptcy as touching his business three times in 1991. In spite of this, he forged ahead. He overcame that adversity and became a super successful businessman. That right attitude towards failure eventually propelled him to win the American presidency and is today the president of the United States. Henry Ford, the automobile entrepreneur, also failed a couple of times in his automobile business. Proverbs 24, 16 says that a righteous man may fall seven times but he will rise again. Did, have you failed in business once? Do not give up. Take another step and success will be your portion in Jesus' name. The following are practical steps that you can take to bounce back if you, if you have failed in business. Number one, Identify what the cause of failure is so that you don't fall into it again. Also, remove negative forces like self doubt, fear, pessimism, and negative confession from your life. To bounce back, you should also have a positive attitude and believe in yourself that you can make it and you will make it. Also, make sure you are not doing the, right, the wrong business. If you get involved in a business that does not have God's approval, you are likely to fail because God is not liable to bless what he did not approve. In order to bounce back, we will also advise you to get a godly mentor. Get a godly and experienced mentor and align yourself with the right people. It is also important that you pay your tithes, give your offering, and first fruit faithfully, correctly, and timely. You also need to live a holy life and be completely honest in your business dealings. You want to bounce back from failure in business? We admonish you to be a fasting and prayer addict. You should also ask God for wisdom, insight and direction to run your business daily. Finally, we advise you to be courageous. Be determined and optimistic. Walk by faith. 
and trust God absolutely. You are not a failure until you give up. That brother said he's afraid to take another step. Overcome fear in your life. Take another step. Also, we noted that the root cause of your problem and failure in business is financial problem and borrowing. Learn more about financial management and correct your mistakes in that area. As you take the step of faith and try again, the Lord will give you huge success in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The question, second question goes first. My money fear, my money fear, Okay, my money fear is that I don't have enough to take care of my needs. Anytime I have to pay school fees, rent, invest and take care of myself and take care of my parents I get worried at times I beg for assistance what, what should I do some of us are familiar with the situation the, the sender of this question has found himself today. There are several bills to pay, but money is just not enough. We call this money worry. We would like to tell us this morning that money worries are avoidable. Our candid advice to everyone is that you should not worry when it comes to money matters. We would also like to advise this person to improve on money management skills. This will give you firm control of your finances and help you to eliminate money worries from your life. What is money management? Money management is the, is the process of budgeting, saving, spending, and investing your money. A poor person who understands money management and does so correctly will eventually become rich. A rich person, conversely speaking, who does not know how to manage money will one day become poor. Here are some management, money management tips that will help to solve your money worries. Number one, you must learn how to set up a budget. It is important for all of us to be budget conscious and budget driven. A good budget will enable you to know how much, your in, how much of your income you want to spend. On what you want to spend it. It will help you to know how much you want to save. It will also help you to know how much you want to invest. It is important for every one of us to know how to set a budget. How to draw up a budget. A budget is an important financial planning 
learning tool. It will help you to overcome money worries. When your life is budget driven, you are not likely to go broke. You are not likely to end up in debt. And you are not likely to find yourself spending money you did not plan for. With a budget, you plan your income around your important needs and expenses such as rent school fees and other personal and, and family care it is not enough to set up a budget you must stick to your budget with discipline and determination number three you should cultivate the habit of saving as established in your budget don't ever eat all your seeds also back on up we advise you to invest a percentage of your income when you draw your budget and you have, you have determined what you want to spend what you want to save and what you want to invest it's also important that you set a portion aside for what we call miscellaneous or contingencies so that if something unexpected happens you are not caught napping Beloved, when you follow the money management tips we have shared with you, you will be in control of your financial life and you will be free from money worries. God bless you in Jesus' name. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Nipo ni Oluwa Olorun. Arise today. Advertise your glory in my life. Olowo in the name of Jesus. Ni Oruko Jesu. Advertise your glory. Olowo o use my life to advertise your glory. Do I hear me last in Polongo. In the name of Jesus. Ni Oruko Jesu. In Jesus' name we pray. So where is the Lord God of Elijah? Advertise your favor in my life. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name we pray.